Dad was born in Townsville in August 1918 and he started school actually over on Magnetic Island Primary School which was where his grandmother had a guest house. They came back, Nana and Pop, my step-grandfather, and from there they went to Camerwell where Nana had a, a hotel over there. Camerwell was a small place, probably only about 200 people in those days. Mount Isa wasn't even on the map at that stage. So Dad went to primary school there, but also he did go to primary school in Richmond and Munding Borough and a short stint in Sydney. And from there he went as a boarder to All Souls School at Charters Towers. So he did his secondary school schooling up there, which um, he didn't like particularly at first, but he settled in well and he was a prefect, uh, represented the school in swimming, he was swimming captain at school. Following his secondary school, he came down to Brisbane and started university doing medicine. And while in, at university, because he liked shooting, which he did out on at the property out at Camerwell, uh, he joined the university 9RQR battalion uh, there. He graduated in 1941. He went to Royal Brisbane Hospital, so it was totally different life being incarcerated in the, the hospital and long hours. Then the, he was called up for, uh, to go to war in 1942, Dad was called up and he joined the 101 field ambulance up in Gympie. Gympie at that time had um, big problems with dengue fever and meningitis. And so when he was there, he went, was seconded, I think, over to the Gympie General Hospital. Superintendent there was Dr. Cord Constable. and. He helped with all the patients over there. Then he, as he said, jumped the fence over at the showgrounds and he joined another um, army unit at the showgrounds and then they were posted out to Gamiri. And from there he went up to, the, they boarded a troop train in Gympie and went up to Wandekla, I think it was. Um, and all around the Atherton Tableland where they had route marches and they didn't really appreciate that until they got to New Guinea. One instance when he was in New Guinea, um, he was so guarding a perimeter with a, a Smith and Wesson, he said, and 
they'd gone to bed and he had his ground sheet slung between two cross posts and the, because of all the mosquitoes up there had a um, mosquito net over him and there was a bomb blast which he likened to an earthquake in Japan and he said he doesn't know whether it was the noise or the fright that he got but he ended up on the ground all enmeshed in the mosquito net. <laughs> he said it was a bit scary. Uh, he did like seeing all the different aircraft coming up the Ram Ramu Valley and they'd thunder through all different types of aircraft. While Dad was in Moresby, he was involved in the disaster that befell uh, Don Company of the 2nd 33rd Battalion uh, when a fully laden liberated bomber and it exploded on takeoff in the middle of emplaining troops and he said that the, the whole company was almost all wiped out. Uh, I think that really stuck in his mind too. Another instance Dad relayed was travelling over the Owen Stanley ranges. Uh, the plane, he said, was overloaded, overcrowded and not pressurised. As a result, the headaches, earaches, sinus aches that they all endured, he said, was unbelievable. On his return from New Guinea, Dad was to return to his um, ambulance unit, but he was pulled off the plane in Townsville and promoted to Deputy Director of Medical Services, Northern Territory Force in Darwin. And he remained there until the war ended, so he missed going to um, Moratai and Balak. Papam, which he did regret. But um, Darwin itself he did enjoy. Uh, he had the job of looking after medical liaison from Alice Springs North. He was delegated from there to take the medical manpower to Timor to accept the surrender, the Japanese surrender. But he said they um, hadn't really confirmed that the Japs knew that the war was over and they were sailing in in the corvette and he said it was quite eerie and terrifying to see the, the gun emplacements sliding open as they went in. Uh, a frightening experience. He came back from Copang in a strip Catalina flying boat. Uh, but it, it, when it hit the rushing tide in Darwin, it obviously was very noisy. Not only did they hit the rushing tide, but they hit a snag as well. But they all managed to get out before the fuselage filled with water. So. Then they came back from the war on an American Liberty ship. Mm -hmm. 
after the war, Dad came back and went into practice with Dr. Les Outridge in Gympie. Uh, he worked with him for a couple of years, moved from Caledonia Hill, where we were, up to Shannon Street, where Mum and Dad had bought an old boarding house. And that house was converted into our home and we had the surgery on one side. Dad did his own x-rays, did his own plasters, fractured limbs, things like that. He worked very hard. He was a dedicated doctor, I think. Um, solo practice meant 24 hours a day, seven days a week, nearly 52 weeks of the year. The only time he'd take off would be to go to a conference. Um, he was someone who was always learning. He kept up to date, he'd read his journals, he'd go to conferences, uh, it was all important in the treatment of his patients. I remember times when, or back in those days, early days, Dad did the first uh, blood transfusion change of blood in what was called RH babies, the blue babies. Um, and that entailed, of course, the baby was born at night time and it would take nearly all night to change the blood. So he'd be sitting up at the hospital changing that baby's blood, come home, have a shower, um, go off to theatre, theatre being the operating theatre, do his surgery, which he liked. When I say surgery, I mean operations. He liked that part of his work too. Uh, he'd go off and do that. Maybe if he had time, do uh, rounds at the hospital, come back, do his surgery, morning, then afternoon surgery. Monday, Tuesday and Thursday nights was, were surgery nights as well. So in winter time particularly, mum and dad would be lucky to get dinner in time. You know, it'd be 15 minutes in, eat gobble up your food and get back to surgery because with winter with all the ailments that, that people had and they'd be there. One other incident I do remember is uh, a patient had, ha, who had had an accident off a motorbike I think had um, pressure building up on his brain and in those days it was a four hour slow trip from Gympie to Brisbane and Dad knew that this patient was not going to last that long. So um, he had to do a burr, what's called burr hole surgery. But he phoned uh, a specialist in Brisbane, Dr Ken Jamison, who was a neurosurgeon. And he said, no, you'll have to do it there. So a nurse held the, the phone to Dad's ear while Dr Jamison talked him through the procedure. And that patient was at Dad's funeral, which is a nice story. Dad and my uncle, Jeff Sykes, who was a solicitor in Gympie, um, both decided that Gympie needed sewerage. In those days, was it days of when people only spent money that they had, and I suppose council was no different. So no one had really um, done anything about borrowing money. Dad and Jeff decided that if they wanted this, they needed to nominate for council, which they did and were duly elected. They managed to get the sewerage put on in Gympie and they did their term. And because both of them had very busy practices, term was long enough, they achieved their goal and that was it. When Dad came back to Gympie after the war, he joined the RSL club and I really don't know whether that was for company, for um, male company, but I know that he did play darts there and he played snooker, which he loved, the snooker. Um, 
He used to go probably Friday nights for a little while, not ever for very long. Uh, he was in the RSL up until his death. Uh, he was vice president in the sub branch and he became a trustee later on. Uh, in the club, he was president and vice president. Uh, my uncle Jeff was president for many, many years. And um, dad was also patron from 2001 until the time of his death. With dad's busy practice, he didn't have much time for relaxation, but mum and dad did go to golf um, weekends, which would mean Quentin and I would be left with the sitter because we had to have someone there to answer the phone and door because patients often came in over the weekend. Um, if patient came in and it was serious, uh, the sitter would have to decide whether or not to call dad. They would phone the golf club and if it could wait until he finished that nine holes, it, they would wait. Otherwise, the golf club would send a car down the fairway to pick him up and bring him home so that he could attend to the patient. That was their only relaxation because he was just so busy the rest of the time. Neville was my favourite uncle and as a young fellow I actually went to school in Gympie and lived with, with Neville and Joyce and I got to know what a guy he was, how hard he worked, the amount of time he put in at night time, he'd be up all night going out delivering babies all over the place or dealing with emergencies and as I got to know him I got to learn a bit more about him and especially his military service because I was destined to go in the army myself and and I found out, you know, he was, one day he was a corporal, next day he was a captain, and he went straight to the AIF without any, you know, this was early in the war. And uh, the way he went, and then when he came back, he started his practice off again. And he, he didn't even charge people. They'd leave a bag of beans because they didn't have any money in those days. He grew up in the bush, and he had that bush sort of thing about him. He was fabulous. Mm. My GP in Brisbane, we were talking one day, and he mentioned that Gympie, and I said, oh, you'd probably know my uncle. He said, well, in those days, there was only a couple of doctors in Gympie, and he said, I actually went up out of med school, and I had to go to the hospital, and I was with him. And he said, we'd be doing an operation, and I'm thinking, this is going to take forever. This guy is so layback. And when it was all over, I'd look at my watch, and he'd done it in a crazy amount of time, but he just gave that impression that everything was just layback. Another time, I went to the uh, dawn service with him, then marched back to the RSL, and um, Quentin, that's his son, my cousin, we're sitting there, and every woman that walked past him gave him a kiss and a hug. And I said, what's with you, Wilma? And he said, well, it's simple. He said, I either delivered them, their kids, or both. <laughs> he said, that's why they know me. So I knew Neville as my grandfather. Um, or Pa as we referred to him um, as kids. So my sister and I were his only grandchildren or granddaughters. So my earliest memories of Pa would probably be, um, I guess, around the time that he retired um, from general practitioner. Um, so I guess at that era of his life, he started um, taking on more of the, the household duties and, and things like that. So when we'd come up to visit, um, he was obviously around a lot more and and started to find some hobbies to entertain himself. I think um, he realised he needed to stay busy. Um, I'm not sure what age he was when he retired, but it felt like he was still quite young. Um, so he took up uh, learning a couple of different languages. As children going up there to visit, as I said, he tended to take on some of the household duties in retirement. Um, and my sister and I would pop down to the local Coles with him um, just to get a few items and we had a running joke of how long it would take to um, just to get those few items purely because he'd get stopped so often by patients of his that just wanted to say hello and, and have a chat so he's very well known around Gympie. Um, I guess it was a smaller town back then so um, and he was well known in the community for being the, the local doctor at the time and was um, held in very high regard. Yeah, I guess going up to Gympie was always a fun time. Um, he was very 
um, generous as a grandfather, um, right from when we were small children, right through to our sort of school years and, and then into university as well. He, um, he supported my sister and I um, quite a lot through um, that time to definitely get us to where we both are today. I didn't know Dad was a soldier, but I do know that he was a dedicated doctor. His patients came first. Growing up, my brother Quentin and I didn't really see much of Dad, but we did come to appreciate later in life all that he did for us and for others as well. We were proud of him. Mm -hmm.